There's monuments, there, I've used monuments really successfully in DC because I, whenever I go any place, I take my camera and I take pictures. And we've got monuments to everything. We've got monuments to politicians, we've got monuments to war heroes, but we also have monuments like the one in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, to newspaper boys. We've got monuments in Lowell, Massachusetts, in Manchester, New Hampshire, to the Mill Girls. Uh, we have monuments everywhere. And anytime a monument is created, whether it's in a small community or on the grand stage of Washington, D.C., there's almost invariably problems with it. Because that monument means, may mean one thing to one person, but it may mean something entirely different to another person. I think our monuments to the Civil War are a classic example of this. Uh, you know, after the Civil War, monuments sprouted up both north of the Mason-Dixon line and south of the Mason-Dixon line uh, to both Union heroes and Confederate heroes. Uh, clearly, uh, one knows by looking at the record that it's true that the, the North won the war, but the South won the peace in terms of the, the, the record of public memory. Um, but we're 25 years past the Civil Rights Movement, and now those monuments mean something else. So what do those monuments mean? And what do we do with these monuments? Do we tear them down? Do we take them, take them apart? Or do we interpret them? Uh, one of the more interesting monuments uh, that I've worked with with my students is in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. Uh, it's the monument to Hayward Shepard, the station baggage master who was a free black, who was the first man to fall victim to John Brown and his raiders. It's a great ironic tale. Uh, raiders come in ostensibly to liberate the slaves, lead a slave insurrection, and the man they first shoot is a free black. Well, in the early part of the 20th century, the United Daughters of the Confederacy and the Sons of Confederate Veterans raised a memorial to Hayward Shepard. It's a very controversial memorial because it's very paternalistic. It's loaded with uh, racial uh, assumptions. It, it, it's really very uh, denigrating in, in some ways, yet we still have this. And depending on the prevailing winds of time, uh, there have been times where the monument was boarded up because the Park Service didn't want anybody to see it, and then there's been times when it's been out for the public to see. And I think what the, what the Park Service has finally settled on is we're going to interpret the monument as a marker of American memory. Uh, it's, it reflects a time and place in America that says more about the UDC and the Sons of Confederate Veterans than it really does about Hayward Shepard. Um, so monuments uh, are great objects to teach. Uh, the German word for monument is Denkmal, which means thought object, and you really have to engage monuments. They're, they're meant to be encountered, and the great artists understood how to get the people that were looking at the monument into the monumental space to view the monument and to understand their place in terms of the monument.